Chapter 10 Inheritance Inheritance is one of the characteristics of an object oriented programming. Then what is inheritance? It is the ability of one class to inherit properties from another class. It is the ability of one class to inherit properties from another class. Means one class is deriving from another class or one class is getting some properties of another class. See here A and B are the classes. One A and B are the classes. Class B is deriving from class A. Class B is deriving from class A. So A is called base class or super class. A is called base class or super class. Then B is called subclass or derived class. B is called subclass or derived class. That is B is getting some properties of A. Class B is getting some properties of A. So then what will be the definition of base class and subclass? Base class, another name is super class. Definition is, it is, the, it is the class whose properties are inherited by another class. It is the class whose properties are inherited by another class. In the previous example, class A is the base class because A's properties are inherited by class B. A's properties are inherited by class B. So, A is the base class. Then, what is subclass or derived class? It is the class that inherits properties from base class. That is, subclass is the class that inherits properties from base class. In the previous example, B inherits properties from class A. So, B, B is the subclass. Next, syntax of inheritance. Class, derived class, then colon, visibility mode, base class, space, base class, then same like normal class, opening bracket, then private, public, protected, then closing bracket and semicolon. See, we can consider one example. See here, student and student one. Here, which is the base class? Student is the base class. Student one is the subclass or derived class. Here, student one is deriving from the class student. Then, how to represent this inheritance in C++ program? See, Class, after that, derived class name. Here, which is the derived class? Student 1 is the derived class name. Then, colon. Then, visibility mode. After that, visibility, this visibility mode will be one of the access specifier, private or public or protected. We will be discuss it later. In this example, we are using the visibility mode public and base class is student then opening bracket in this private one data member is there mark and two member functions are there in the class student one get mark and display mark two member functions get mark and display mark see this student one is deriving from the class student that is student 1 is the derived class and student is the base class actually this is the class what is the name of this class student 1 we are defining the class student 1 with inheritance so here student 1 will get the properties of student class also
Next, advantages of inheritance. First one, reusing existing code. That is, the derived class is reusing some code of the base class. So then, then second one, faster development time. Because of reusing, development of the software will be easier. Then third one, easy to maintain. Fourth one, easy to extend. Fifth one, memory utilization. Because of reusing the existing code, memory will be using less. Next, we can consider one example program for inheritance. We can consider one example program for inheritance. Here, see, here two classes are using student and student 1. Student and student 1. In student, two member functions are there. Get data and display. In student 1, get mark and display mark. Get mark in student 1, two member functions. Get mark and display mark here, which is the derived class. Student 1 is the derived class. Student is the base class. Then, how to write the program of inheritance? First, hash include iostream.h, hash include conio.h. Then, first, Define the base class. Here, which is the base class? Student is the base class. Here, private two private members are there. Register number and name. In student class, data members are register number and name. Two member functions are there. Get data and display. This is the class student. In this student class, Two member functions are there, get data and display. Next, this get data. How to define this get data? We are defining this get data function outside the class using scope resolution operator. In this get data function, we are inputting register number and name. Enter the register number and name. In display function, display function is also we are defining outside the class with the scope resolution operator. In this display function, we are printing that register number and name. Printing the register number and name. Next, we need to use the inheritance. We need to define the class student1. Stu we need to define the class student1 with using inheritance. Then class student1, this student1 we need to derive from the class student. So we need to use this inheritance symbol colon. Then here visibility mode we are using public. Then base class is student. This means student1 is inheriting from the class student. Means this student 1 will get the properties of student also. In student 1 class, one data member is there, mark. See, student 1 is having one data member, mark, and two member functions. Two member functions. What are the two member functions? Get mark and display mark. Get mark and display mark how to write how to define this get mark outside the class void which is the class name here get mark is the member function inside the class student one so void student one scope resolution operator get mark in this one we are entering the mark in get mark inputting the mark in display mark also defining using the scope resolution operator. Void student 1 scope resolution operator display mark. In this display mark we are printing the mark. In student 1, one data member is there mark. 
get and two member functions are there get mark and display mark student one is deriving from the class student then in void main see here here we are creating the object of student one student one is the derived class see student one is the derived class here s1 is the object of student one s1 is the object of this class student one but see here s1 dot get data s1 dot display s1 dot get mark s1 dot display mark see using the object of the derived class we can access the member functions of base class also see this get data and display are the functions of the class student student is the base class get data and display are the member functions of the class student but using the object of derived class using the object of this derived class we can access get data and display this is the use of inheritance Th that is this student one object of this student one will get the properties of this student also that is we can access the member functions of student and student one using the object of student one that is using the object of derived class we can access the properties of student and student one that is why here we are creating the object of derived class and using that derived class object we are accessing the base class functions and derived class function